Hey, what's up guys? Jace Two Cents here, out here in my shop, because I'm gonna do a little bit of a build vloggy thing. Um, yeah, if that makes any sense. I'm covered in cardboard. I just cut open a cardboard box and it, it shed on me. Shed, it didn't shit on me, it shed on me. Same thing. Whether you're looking for a pump, reservoir, custom GPU block, or a complete loop in a box, AlphaCool's wide range of products can make your next water cooling adventure an easy one. Click the link in the description for more details. Of course, right when I start to record, the neighbors are like cutting wood or some shit. So anyway, you guys are probably gonna hear some construction and stuff going on, because again, I'm outside in my shop. Um, but I digress. So as you guys can see, I have got my old test bench right here, which is a Case Labs case. Um, this isn't even available anymore. And in fact, it's been a very solid, um, very faithful test bench, if you will. But it's got some drawbacks to it in terms of ease of use of changing out parts and stuff. And I'm going to be switching that over today to a uh, Praxis wet bench, as you can see right here. And this is made by Primo Chill. So it's designed to be an open air test bench with water cooling in mind. And so obviously they thought of me when they built it. Probably not, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll go with that. So what I'm gonna do today is I am going to be taking out some of the parts from here, the water cooling loop from here, putting it on the Praxis. But I'm gonna be changing out my motherboard as well. I'm not gonna be using the Gigabyte in board anymore. I'm be using the X99 Classified, um, not the K, just the regular old Classified from EVGA. Still by far one of the most stable boards I've ever used. This Gigabyte board has actually been pretty good, but I'm actually changing it specifically because of the aesthetics. I'm, I'm just, I'm cheesy and, and shallow like that. So as I said, this is the Case Labs S3 test bench, but as you can see, it's pretty big. It, it's big, it's not too light. Um, damn, neighbors, geez. Anyway, here's the cables right there. Over the years, I had this nice and managed, but over the years and using it over and over, it eventually just, like I stopped caring. I don't know, something even just fell out right there. But over the years, I just stopped caring about it so much. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna tackle this. We're gonna move over the parts I want to reuse over to the Praxis. We're gonna build the Praxis. And then, uh, yeah, so it's sort of a vloggy, vloggy build review, if you will. Oh, and as you can see, hanging out over there is the EVGA DG87. We'll be doing a full water-cooled build in that thing, but this came in first, so I gotta get this done. All right, so one of the biggest issues I always had with this particular case was that, uh, you can see I started taking it apart, a little bit out of order here, actually, but the motherboard tray splits apart, and I had the hard drives mounted to the bottom of that because in order to have room here for all my cables and then of course my water cooling loop on the other side with the radiator and fans, I had to remove the hard drive cages. So because of that, I had to mount the hard drives to the bottom of the motherboard tray here and I'll show you that in a second, which really made it kind of a bitch if I wanted to make any sort of changes to hard drives. That's one of the deciding factors for me to actually uh, change out my case here. There they are right there, mounted to the bottom. I mean, it's really not that, you don't change it a lot when it comes to uh, test being a test bench, but just having it pretty much locked down the way it was, had to go through all of that to get to it, uh, is just not, I'm not too happy with that. One of the things you'll notice I never installed in this test bench is a drain loop or a drain port, and that's because as you can, tell by all that dust. I don't take this apart very often. In fact, this has been together with the same fluid now for I think two years. It's been about two years. Uh, the fluid's turned a little bit darker red than it used to be, but not much, actually. This is the EK fluid. This is all the EK loop that came with the Cryovenom 290, actually, which was a EK um, collaborate, uh, collaborative effort with um, Vision Tech. So, Anyway, this has been together all that time, and the way I basically drain this is I just will hang literally this over the edge like that, put a bowl or something under here to catch the fluid and undo that port and then just let it drip out. That's literally how I drain this guy. And then of course I undo the bleeder cap uh, on the top right here. That guy, right there. That way air can get in the system and push the fluid out. It's kind of a messy way of doing it, but yeah, I, I didn't plan on taking this apart very often. I will say this though, whatever tubing 
EK had put in their kits. Man, this stuff is good. Look at this. Zero clouding after about two years. Same fluid, never swapped. Uh, obviously, it's some sort of a non-plasticizer tubing, but it's not labeled, so I don't know exactly what brand it is. But my God, that is so clear after two years. You guys have seen tube before. Well, we're turned cloudy after two months. Heck, two weeks sometimes. Yeah, good job on the tubing, shit. So here it is right here. I went with the white with black. That way I'm not locked down to any particular color theme. I'm gonna be using green coolant, actually, testing out some of the green color here that I'm gonna be using for Skunk Works moving forward. Uh, but you can see some of the other color options on their website. They got blue, pink, gray, orange, red. I mean, any colors you can think of, as well as the white metal right here. Uh, you can choose black or white, and obviously I went with the white. I went with white because it shows up dust a lot less. But anyway, I believe Kyle and Paul both have these as well. I could be wrong. I know Paul has one. I don't know if Kyle has one. Um, but check their channels as well because you guys will be able to see some of the other options and things that you can do with this. But it does come flat packed, which means you got to build it. So let's go ahead and do that now. They also went through a lot of effort in the way that they packed this to make it, you know, one, presentable, two, easy to manage, and three, um, easy to find, really. So all the hardware is there. We've got our PSU mounting bracket here, and then everything is individually cordoned off with heavy duty double wall cardboard, as well as all that foam. So the chances of something getting damaged in transit are very, very thin. Instructions are pretty nice. They're all illustrated and makes it easy to understand. And then of course, here are the acrylic accent pieces I was telling you about. Be delicate with this. Don't go bending it and stuff. It's acrylic, it will crack um, pretty easily. You also don't want to over tighten it. Um, but anyway, you also want to pull off this paper, this protective paper before you put it on. Otherwise the accent side that's against the metal isn't going to show. Uh, but anyway, yeah, you can see right there, there's a lot of craftsmanship in this. Obviously they have a really nice cutter to cut all this up. I kind of wish I had these, these sort of tools. And as you can see, it's starting to take shape. The only thing that's gonna kind of suck about the acrylic though is it will scratch. If it gets dusty and you wipe it, acrylic scratches, especially glossy acrylic. Um, but anyway, that's besides the point here. This, at least it's not on the outside or it'd be even worse. This is all steel right here. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and put the rest of this thing together. And then um, before I do the loop, and then we'll go from there. So far, it's a lot smaller. Well, not really much of a smaller footprint, but definitely seems like more usable space on here. American conditioner just kicked on, so it's trolling me. <clears throat> well, the Praxis wet bench is completely together. You can see I've got my Classified X99 on there. Um, Titan X Maxwell card, just for the heck of it right now. And now I've got to do the water cooling loop. But you can see it's pretty well thought out. So here's the radiator bracket. And um, you can fit 360 millimeter radiator or 420 millimeter radiator on there. I'm gonna be putting a 360 on there as you guys have already seen. Take the, took that off the other bench. And yeah, it's pretty well thought out. This area here is pretty much wide open. I chose to hang the drives underneath instead of going up in here. I'm gonna try and keep as much of the wiring down the bottom as I can, but I can also use this area to kind of coil up wires and set them aside if I need to. Uh, but they've got it pretty well thought out, like cut out right here for the power to pass through. Same there for the two and a half inch drive. And uh, normally this is where like you could put the reset and power buttons right here on both sides. You could even set one right here on the top if you wanted, or you could set it over here on this side. And here are those buttons right there. However, I'm not gonna be installing those because the motherboard I have here has motherboard mounted power and reset. So I don't need any of those buttons, but they're there in case your motherboard doesn't support it. Like the, um, the other motherboard I had on here, the Gigabyte X99 UD4P did not have any of these buttons. So anyway, there's that. So now I've gotta get the water cooling loop together. So I'm trying to figure out right now the best way to mount, I've got this obviously upside down. Uh, I'm kind of Frankensteining together some parts here, if you will. Yeah, I don't need this anymore. Get out of here. Um, this is the part where the water cooler in me is being very particular on the way I want things to go. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna see how far I can get on this right here. It might end up being a part two. I apologize. I don't really want to do a part two, but I'm gonna see how far I can get. It, I got a lot to do today. Little Jay's first day of second grades today. She's gonna be home from school soon. I got the gym to go to. I just have to edit this video. 
Yeah, so I, I, I'm gonna stop talking now and I'm gonna get to it. Well guys, unfortunately this is gonna be a two-parter and I apologize for that. I tried really hard to get it all done today in one day, but it just didn't happen. Mostly because I was trying to figure out where I wanted to mount things. So let's talk about this for a second here. I ended up taking my Lang DDC um, and mounting it to the Alpha Cool Reservoir here. That's a reservoir top combo right here on the side, which is nice because I can fill it up here on the top nice and easily. And I can drain it with that port right there, if you guys can see. So I'm gonna hook my drain port up to this right here, and then you're gonna be able to, I'll be able to drain it and fill it all from right here. Uh, but anyway, this is the radiator here, but I'm gonna flip it around, because right now, I have it set up so that as it goes on there, the fittings are on the inside. But I'm gonna flip the radiator around so that the fittings are poking out, that way I can have easy access to the in out here on the back of this going to the radiator and then going to the CPU and then back to here. I also need to sleeve this right here because obviously that's not gonna work for me. Um, but as you can see, I got that same gigabyte 1200 watt orange PSU that they seem to have sent to everybody. Um, so I'm putting it on here, it's a 1200 watt platinum rated and I'm taking the 1000 watt that was on here and I'm putting it in the uh, DG87 build. So yeah guys, um, I think it's a pretty damn neat bench. I really, really do. And it's a pretty overkill for being a, you know, this is an old Titan, not a new one. Um, I think it's a pretty damn overkill piece of a machinery, but that's how we like to do it around here. Anyway, once again, I feel so, I feel really bad about the two-parter. I don't like doing multi-parts when I can avoid it, but this time I couldn't avoid it. All right, guys, the next part here will be me putting together the rest of the loop. So it will be all water cooling related on the wet, wet bench aspect of it. And then we'll do a review of the formal review of the case once it's all together. I just thought I would vlog today because it's the best part of putting the two, putting two things together that we love, making a video and uh, uh, getting work done and doing the build at the same time. All right, guys, thanks for watching. As always, I'll see you in the next video.